Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to 13 minutes of unbelievable moments um, by Underworld. It's been a long time since I've reacted to this channel, but you know how it is. We're going to jump into this. Hopefully going to enjoy. Links are in the description to my Patreon if you want to see some more of my reactions that I can't post on YouTube, but let's just jump into this. From a demolition job in southern Ohio that didn't go according to plan, and a swimming pool in eastern Kentucky that got washed away by a flash flood oh to a floating days. Russian restaurant that decided to take a trip downstream and a cruise ship that came way too close to hitting a bridge in Australia. Here are 13 minutes of unbelievable moments. This is going to be a tasty video, man. It's going to be a, a banger. In Manchester, Ohio, a small village north of the Kentucky border, a demolition crew arrived to tear down some old cement towers. They were only hired to get rid of four of the five towers. Apparently, one of those towers had a mind of its own. Okay, so they've... Trying to get them down. Demolition job in that. Oh no. Is it knocking the other one? Oh my days. Did the other tower get knocked down as well? Oh, it did. Holy shit. I mean, if they were trying to get the other one down too, then it kind of worked, but I didn't know they were. The James Stewart electric generating system shut down in 2018. Another company bought the land in 2019 and wanted to rip the whole thing down. On the bright side, the new owners probably saved a little money. Now, That's they don't have to pay another crew to demolish the fifth tower. Unless they already prepped it up and it was going to go down anyway, but you know what? I'm thinking to myself, it's probably saved them a bit a bit of time too. On the brighter side, everything came crumbling down. <laughs> Unlike this failed demolition in Chankiri, Turkey. It was a simple job, really. Cut this old flower factory like a tree and let it collapse. Nobody's been here since the 80s. How hard can it be? Well, they learned that lesson the hard way in August of 2009. Whoever built this place should pat themselves on the back. That is one sturdy frame. <laughs> Oh, oh no. Did it hit the other building in the end? According Jeez. to the locals, the old factory came within a few feet of the neighboring building when it rolled over. Thankfully, nobody got hurt. We wonder if that building would have been sturdy enough to withstand, I don't know, catastrophic flooding? Fast forward to the summer of 2022. Massive floods ravaged eastern Kentucky. Heavy rainfall in late July caused flash floods across the region. Some people watched as their homes got washed away. Others just lost their pool. Flipping hell, man. It's just ripping it like that. It's quite satisfying to see the difference in the waters as well. I'm not going to lie. Oh, what the Just gone like that. I mean, you got a bigger pool now. <laughs> it's leading into this whole area. <laughs> Jeez, man. The pool completely disappeared in the murky water. It looks like a blue river snake slithering away. According to the National Weather Service, there were over 600 helicopter rescues and countless water rescues to try and pull people from the raging water. Man. A similar scene occurred on the Volga River in eastern Russia. The people of Samara used to love the Old Wharf restaurant. It was a floating eatery anchored by several docks. On April 17th of 2018, a massive ice patch crashed into a floating restaurant, jarring it loose. The worst part? It was in the middle of a busy lunch service. Oh, it, oh my days. Imagine that, you're just having, you're eating in this restaurant and then suddenly you're just in the middle of the ocean and you, you're stuck there. Look at the power. Oh, 
Да, 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 у них тёплый. Надо звонить, наверное, куда-нибудь, нет? Слепи. Ау, мэн. И ту сейчас нечего. Вон, все трубы повырывала, мазки все повырывала. Да. И смотри, какая она ее точно унесёт. Да. Все, трубу оторвало. И его оторвало. Все, вторая труба не выдержала. Все, сорвало его. А это что за Jeez, man. Это он на катере смылся сейчас? I don't know if the story of the people actually eating there is true or not, but if that is the case, that is... That's crazy. Floating away with the ice. <laughs> oh, it's big as well. God damn. According to reports, the restaurant was full when it broke free from the dock. Everyone inside took a wild ride down the ice cold Volga River. Thankfully, nobody got hurt or lost their lunch. A tugboat arrived some time later and hauled the runaway restaurant back to shore. We we'll call it, this incident it, a close call, almost as close as this ship came. Makes it a fun experience, right? Makes it more memorable. So, as long as no one was injured, it's not nothing, nothing too deep with that. Okay, so this was shown in the intro. This bus, this bus, this boat. Does it hit the? The bridge came to hitting a bridge in Sydney, Australia. The Harbour Bridge is a 3,800 foot steel structure connecting the Sydney suburbs of Currabilly and Dawes Point. Hundreds of boats pass under it every day. Some come a little too close for comfort. From this angle, it looks like the cruise ship is about to crash into the bridge. Then it glides underneath. Next, it looks like the antennas are about to get lopped off, but those make it under too. Now we know you were hoping to see the ship hit the bridge, so to scratch that itch, here's a collision from Ecuador. This boat was allegedly confiscated. Oh my days. I, for some reason, I don't think this is going to fit under. <laughs> oh no. For illegal fishing when it crashed into a low pedestrian bridge. Wow. Let's see that again from another angle. Jeez, man. That is a big ass boat going into that tiny, tiny bridge. So you have one fine for illegal fishing and another for destroying the bridge. Someone certainly had an awkward phone call to make. Kind of like these Norwegian guys who sunk their shipping crane during a load test. Safem is an Italian company that makes giant cranes for oil drilling. Those cranes obviously need to be tested before being shipped off to sea. The Sapem 7000 has been in service since 1987. On April 14th of 2022, it came in for routine load testing off the coast of Norway. What happened next almost cost them the entire $400 million vessel. Oh my. What? What's happened there? Vedi, vedi i cavi? Non era una questione soltanto di bettolina. Prima che la bettolina arrivasse tutta, i cavi erano già arrivati pure su quello. Poi mollato proprio in libera, completamente, proprio mollato tutto. What the hell? How has that happened? And what were, they, what were they trying to do? No, I didn't know. I didn't know. The company said the crane had already passed several trials and was performing its planned five-year load test. One of the main wires broke, causing the entire vessel to list one way and drop its load into the water. This oh. was just an accident waiting to happen. We can't say the same for this truck driver who got his fully loaded car hauler stuck on the train tracks. If you thought you were having a bad day at work, just be thankful you aren't this guy. He was driving through Thackerville, Oklahoma in October of 2021 when his truck got caught on the tracks. The worst part? 
It was fully loaded with cars. Fuck, man, how have you done that? Is this is that his fault though? Because maybe he was trying to drive, and then it because it's such a big car or such a big truck or whatever, it then got like this started going down. But by the time this because this put this car probably went when it was green, so they could drive through. But then it went red, and then it went down, and it didn't give enough time for him to get through. Maybe not. Maybe he's just an idiot. I don't know. But flipping hell, man, this is about to be a crazy collision. To be fair, this car looks like it's probably alright. <laughs> Just a bit of scratching here and there. That Amtrak train <laughs> obliterated those cars. You might think it was a scene from Fast and Furious. According to the Sheriff's Department, there were 110 people on the train when it hit the semi. Four oh, of them God. suffered a few minor injuries, but everyone was okay in the end. We're not sure why the car hauler got stuck, so we'll chalk it up to being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Speaking of wrong place, wrong time, these daredevils in Norway couldn't have chosen a worse iceberg to climb on. Oh my god, why? Is it going to be flipping as soon as they get on it or something? Oh my god, this makes me cringe so much. <sighs> this makes me cringe so much. You're out in this ocean, you're going to climb this ice, but this... Oh, this is going to go wrong. Either it's going to flip or I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going to hate this. They were sailing on the open seas of Svalbard, an island cluster between Norway and the North Pole. They found this iceberg and thought, man, I have to climb it. The boat dropped them off, but Mother Nature had other ideas. Thankfully, our experienced climbers recognized the danger and quickly got out of the way. The boat came back and plucked them out of the freezing water. One of them, Mike Horn, has 30 years of climbing experience. We wonder if this was the first time an iceberg flipped over on him. Unlike Mike's rare flipping iceberg, landslides in India are all too common, though they're not always this big. On July 30th of 2000, so lucky they could have been dragged underwater so easily. 2021, a massive chunk of land broke free in Himachal Pradesh, taking the entire highway with it. Oh, damn. oh my! Oh my God! <laughs> what? Oh my highway days! Is there people there as well? Oh, there is. No way. Oh my god. Thank god no one was there. Just, mate, imagine that. I mean, there's probably like a, a crack there, so they knew that it was not stable, it was going to fall or something, but man. Think about what the mountain used to look like and what it looks like now. These kinds of events are extremely common in northern India. The plates forming the Himalayan mountains constantly shift, leading to freak and often violent landslides. But not all disasters have to have a terrifying ending. Sometimes human ingenuity steps in and saves the day. Okay. Back in December of 2012, some locals were enjoying a calm day on the water when they noticed a fire along the shore. A crashed boat had gone up in flames, and those flames threatened the entire area. Then, like James Bond, another boater rushed in to save the day. Oh! <laughs> wow! 
that is class. That is so class. How have you managed to think of that? I mean, maybe a lot of people would, but I respect it. I can't lie. Wow. The seconds as well. Our speedboat firefighter makes four passes to ensure the fire is out. The people on shore must have thought he was crazy at first, but then they realized what he was doing. People apparently use speedboats and jet skis to put out fires all the time. Really? I didn't know that. I respect it though. I guess this is in Australia, so the chances of it like leading to like a f massive fire are so high, so that's legendary, man. Go ahead, type into Google and see it for yourself. Well, that's all we have. Damn, well that was a fun that was a fun video. Yeah, that speedboat one was class. I liked that a lot. I was not expecting it, but that was quality. The speedboat putting out the boat that was on fire was the best clip. And yeah. 30 minutes of unbelievable moments. If you want more of the stuff, let me know in the comments. And yeah, until next time, I subscribe. Peace.